So let's look at these layers in a bit more detail, and we'll begin with the most superficial layer, the epidermis. Now, as I previously mentioned, the epidermis is made of many different layers or strata. So stratum is, is one, strata is plural. So we have five strata. Let's begin by looking at what they're made of. First of all, keratinized, stratified, layered, squamous, flat epithelial cells. Now notice the ones that are closest to the surface, or a, they are extremely flat and very squamous. But when we get to the deeper layers, especially this very bottom or deepest layer, the base layer, the cells are not flat at all. But we still classify them as stratified squamous epithelial, even though their shape is different. All right, so let's begin with the deepest layer. This one layer of cells right here, the deepest layer of cells is called the stratum basale. So think base layer. Then we have several layers of stratum spinosum. So the stratum spinosum cells have uh, lots, our stratum spinosum layer has lots of cells in several different layers. These cells are called keratinocytes. They attach to their neighboring cells using desmosomes. Remember, those are those spot welds cell junctions. Now, continuing up, so more superficial, the next layer up is three to five layers of keratinocytes. This is called the stratum granulosum. A lot of times when you see this on a microscope, this will be the darkest staining layer because these granules in the cytoplasm take up a lot of stain. Continuing, superficial, the next layer is the stratum lucidum. Lucid means clear. This layer doesn't take up stain well at all, and it is only present in thick skin, which is found on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. And the most superficial layer is actually 20 to 30 layers of dead, flat, keratin-filled keratinocytes. Now, these cells are dead. They can't even hold on to each other anymore. So they are constantly slopping off. Somewhere around 30 to 60,000 of these cells are going to be shed every hour. This means approximately nine pounds of your skin comes off of your body as dead cells in a year. About five billion a day. It's a wonder we even have skin, right? Now, within these layers, we have many different cell types, such as the keratinocytes, melanocytes, tactile cells, epidermal dendritic cells, also known as cells of Langerhans. Now, we're going to look at each one of these layers individually. We'll talk about the cells. We'll talk about the importance of these uh, as we go through each one. All right, so let's begin with the deepest layer of the epidermis, the stratum basale. It's also known as the stratum germinativum or the basal layer. Germinativum means it germinates, makes something new. So this is a single layer of cells that looks sort of cuboidal. I mean, technically we still consider them squamous, even though they're not. So they're cuboidal in their shape. They're tightly packed together and attached to the basement membrane underneath that separates the epidermis from the connective tissue of the dermis. There are three major cell types found in the stratum basale. The keratinocytes are the most abundant cell type in the dermis or in the epidermis, and it's found throughout all of the different layers. The stratum basale has large keratinocyte stem cells that are constantly undergoing mitosis and generating new keratinocytes to replace the ones that are being pushed further and further and further up every time those cells divide. The ones that are closest to the surface, of course, as we've mentioned already, are dead. So the keratinocytes, the stem cells, continuously replace those. 
So the name of these cells is derived because they produce a protein called keratin that strengthens the epidermis. It's a very fibrous structural protein that is tough and insoluble. It gives the skin its strength and makes the epidermis more water resistant so we don't lose or gain excess water. The second cell type are the melanocytes that are found only in the stratum basale. These have long branching cellular processes that are scattered among the keratinocytes of the stratum basale. So they produce and store a pigment called melanin in response to UV light from the sun. Their cytoplasmic extensions transfer that melanin pigment in little granules called melanosomes to the keratinocytes both within that basal layer and sometimes to a few of the more superficial layers. So the pigment varies between black, brown, tan, and a yellowish brown, but it accumulates around the nucleus of the keratinocytes very much like an umbrella and shields the DNA in that nucleus from the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So when you tan, you are actually producing excess melanin to try to protect the DNA in your cells from that UV radiation that can cause DNA mutations. And then the third type of cell are the tactile cells, also called Merkel cells. So these are uh, relatively few in number, but they're scattered among the cells in the stratum basale. They're sensitive to touch, and when they're stimulated, they release chemicals that stimulate the sensory nerve endings. So these are more common in the areas of the stratum basale that are more sensitive uh, and have more of these receptors, such as your fingertips. All right, so now we move to the stratum spinosum. Now remember, we have several layers of cells making up the stratum spinosum. So each time the keratinocytes, the stem cells in the stratum basale divide, a new cell is pushed toward the external surface. So this new cell enters the stratum spinosum and begins to differentiate or specialize into a non-dividing keratinocyte. The keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum attach to their neighboring cells with cell junctions called desmosomes, and that provides a lot of structural support between the cells in the epidermis. Continuing to move superficially, we move to the stratum granulosum, which is made of three to five layers of the keratinized keratinocytes. Once they fill up with that tough protein, keratin, all of the organelles in the nucleus begin to die. But this is the layer that provides the waterproofing. Now, it is very, very strong, even though the cells are starting to die because of all the keratin it contains. Now, in addition to uh, the, the keratinocyte, keratinocytes that we have in the spinosum and the granulosum, we also find in both of these layers some epidermal dendritic cells are, or we call these uh, cells of Langerhans or Langerhans, choose your poison, right? So what these are, are cells that help the immune system to fight off infections in the epidermis. So these immune cells are often present in both the spinosum and the granulosum. They are phagocytes, they eat. So their phagocytic activity initiates an immune response that helps to protect the body against pathogens that might have gotten through those superficial epidermal layers, but also helps to try to destroy uh, skin cancer cells in the epidermis as well. Continuing, the stratum lucidum. So the stratum lucidum is only a couple of layers, two to three layers thick. The cells are still keratinocytes. They're dead by now. Uh, but now this layer is only found in thick skin. Thick skin is only found on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. It is a very thin layer, and it is a translucent or lucid layer. And then we move to the stratum corneum, which can be 20 to 30 layers of dead keratinized cells. The stratum corneum, the most superficial layer, is the layer you see when you look at your skin. Now, of course, you're only seeing the top layer of cells, 
but there's about 20 to 30 layers of dead, scaly-looking cells. So migration of the keratinocytes to the stratum corneum occurs during the first two weeks of the keratinocyte's life after it's made in that stratum basale. The dead keratinized cells usually remain about an additional two weeks in that stratum corneum, the uppermost layer, so it provides a barrier before they just sort of fall off. We call that sloughing off. So keratinocytes are present in your skin for about a month before they fall off. The stratum corneum is a thick surface that's really not suitable for microorganisms to grow. In addition to that, a lot of the secretions of the skin, such as sweat, helps to prevent the growth of microorganisms as well. So it helps to provide that barrier function, not in just the many layers of cells, but also in the chemical composition. So I've mentioned thick skin and thin skin. Let's take just a quick look at these. So at the top here, you see thin skin. Here you see thick skin, and already it's very obvious. Look at that stratum corneum, how thick it is in thick skin as compared to thin skin. So the thinnest skin of all is your eyelids and underneath your eyes. The thickest skin, as we've talked about, the palm of the hands and the soles of the feet. So thick skin has all five strata, all five layers. It contains sweat glands, but no hair follicles or oil glands. I mean, think about it. Thick skin, do you have hair on your palms and the soles of your feet? No, so you don't need oil there either. Thin skin is the rest of the body. It does not have the stratum lucidum, so only four layers. But your thin skin contains your sweat glands, your sebaceous, which are oil glands, and hair follicles as well.